Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. My name is James and I'm going to show you um, the workflow that I did for my latest image uh, which is basically NGC 7000 or the North American Nebula with a little bit of the uh, pelican in there. So why do I have a picture of the moon up? Well, uh, we've, we've had a stretch of five days or so um, clear every single night it's fabulous except it was a full moon cycle uh, so I thought I would start this out with a picture of the moon now this isn't actually what the moon looked like that's closer to what I was looking at so for the whole time uh, for this stretch of clear nights we had a 90 percent or greater moon the full moon was right in the middle of this period so I wasn't sure what to do uh, as far as picking a target uh, and so clearly with a full moon broadband RGB imaging is out the gradients are just too too rough the the, the contrast takes too much of a hit uh, so had to go narrow band and I needed a target and I wanted to shoot something that was far away from the moon so the whole southern hemisphere is out and um, I wanted to fill the entire frame with uh, the target because if there's a lot of empty space around the target then even in narrow band you're dealing with uh, really bad uh, gradients from the moon so I ended up doing NGC 7000 now I've already shot NG, uh, NGC 7000 uh, earlier uh, when I did that SV Boney CLS filter review I shot that with my ASI 533 and uh, recently I shot the Pelican Nebula with my Edge 8 uh, which came out really great uh, check out the video that I have on that one so it kind of felt like I, I didn't plan originally to, to shoot this area but with the full moon I was like well let's just see let's see how it goes and uh, what I ended up doing uh, is I just imaged the same spot this whole period. I, I am ended up with like 37 hours total. So we'll go through that data and take a look. So let's first look at the um, stack channels. So here's our S2. And I have to say, I was uh, pretty surprised that I got this much data despite fighting the full moon. Uh, the scope that I used was at 70 millimeter SV70T, and the camera is an ASI 1600. And yeah, S2 is pretty pretty noisy typically, but I mean this is not too bad. And of course, HA is going to look marvelous. It, I think this is like 13 or 14 hours worth. I mean, there's like no noise in here at all. Now, what was really interesting as I was collecting data on this is that I was seeing a lot of uh, detail in the in the dark dust clouds usually this area is really dark it's all blacked out you don't really see much but I was seeing that we were getting some stuff in there and so as I started processing this I decided to focus the attention on this dust in the middle and let's take a look at the O3 So, I mean, this is actually pretty clean, too. And the data was so clean, thanks to the large amount of uh, integration time, that this image, I did not use any noise reduction at all. Now, as always, uh, there's a lot of experimentation and trial and error going uh, with this. and. Uh, every image is an individual so this one was a little bit different than the past few images I've done typically I just do a, a uh, 
combination of the channels first and then do a crop and then do the dynamic background extraction and I started that uh, here and so this was the combination with an auto stretch with uh, unlocked channels and then I tried doing the dynamic background extraction and I wasn't too happy with how this uh, color it was it was altering the color from the all uh, from the auto stretch and I didn't like where where it was headed but I decided to try to work with it uh, anyway I even tried using the um, color calibration with background neutralization and then color calibration and I tried to process it a little bit and I just I wasn't happy with how this was going and I actually really liked the initial color I was getting from the auto stretch so what I ended up doing is running dynamic background extraction on each individual uh, frame and, and this is how I used to do it and for at least for this image I've gone back to that and that allowed me to use the uh, use the auto stretch option so I, th this the way this color looks is is really nice now I did do a uh, deconvolution and so I pulled out the luminance and we can actually see right here there's my PSF there's a star mask that I used. Now I created a range mask. I ended up not using it for deconvolution because there's so much in here and because I had decided that what I wanted to focus on was the dust. I want to try and get the effects of deconvolution uh, in that area. And I can show you the difference here. Now in past videos where I show the difference I'm, I'm finding that on YouTube it's really hard to see the difference so this may or may not be too obvious on the screen but this I believe is without deconvolution and that should be with it Let's see if I can get closer yeah so focus on these stars so without with without and look at these really faint stars in the background with they pop out a little bit more and let's see if I can get a good look at some of this dust. So yeah, see without it's just a little a little blurred a little bit and with. So it really sharpens it up pretty nice. And that's why I run deconvolution. And yeah, so like I said, I didn't uh, I didn't have a mask. Uh, at all the whole the whole thing was affected yeah so it just does a really nice I mean this area here I mean you can't really see a whole lot here and with deconvolution it it pops out a little bit more all right so uh, after that I applied it to Actually, I'm jumping ahead here, but uh, this, so this, let's see, see if this goes back to uh, when I applied the star, uh, applied star net. Yeah, so we're seeing all my steps there we go okay so I mean really you can see the effects of uh, what deconvolution has so this picture here this is after I applied the uh, deconvoluted luminance back to the color image and if you look at what it looked like before I mean it's it's pretty significant the effect it had on the stars this just looks so crisp compared to this. Alright, so anyway, so there's uh, the star net, take the stars out. 
and then I immediately inverted. The idea is to get rid of most of the magenta. And so there you see most of that magenta is gone. And then really, I mean, it's a lot of uh, play with curves. You can see that I've got uh, uh, a mask here. So what I'm doing with this mask is, as I stated, I wanted to focus on this, uh, on the dust. I wanted to be careful that I didn't darken it so much that you couldn't see any of this structure that's hiding in there. And so you can see how I'm slowly pulling bits of that structure out. And then I reverse the mask to protect this area, this delicate area now. And now I can use curves to darken and build contrast on the color side. And I mean, so it's a lot of different steps. It's, it's doing little tweaks here and there. And it uh, looks like I ended up with this. Now when I get to a certain stage, I sometimes uh, like to pull out a, a copy of it. That way I don't get lost. If I need to back up a few steps, if I don't like the path that I'm going, I can always go back to where I left off at. Uh, so more work here. So I invert it again. And what's happening here is you see this yellow in here. I want to turn this, uh, I want to get rid of some of this yellow and, and, and kind of make it more red. And so see, the inverts of yellow is blue. And by inverting the image, I can then use the SCNR tool to pull some blue out. I want to say 40%, typically 40% is where I go. You don't want to overdo it, otherwise uh, you get a weird magenta color and, and you end up going back and forth between these two undesirable colors. So you can see how there's just a hint of green now, this kind of turquoise looking green that's from removing some of the blue with the SCNR tool and then invert it back and now we have this really nice red color and that's that's the color that I was going for and then kind of the same thing here again I think I also uh, with this here with these uh, previews are is that I used unsharp mask. So the nice thing about having quality data that that's so clean that you don't even need to um, uh, use any noise reduction is that it it behaves better uh, when you sharpen it up. So usually I find the unsharp mask in Pix and Sight it, it creates a lot of weird artifacts and you can see a little bit of it here if I zoom in too much. I mean all this artifacts here is from uh, from the unsharp mask, but you got to zoom in to see it, and it did a really nice job of of uh, tightening up these little bits of dust clouds here. And of course, the nebulosity is looking great. So at this point, it was time to put things back together, and um, I did a little bit more work here. And uh, here's the star mask. Let me step through what I did with the star mask, or I should say the stars. Now, I actually think I went a little bit too aggressive on the stars. I made them too small. So here they are originally. You can see all the magenta. And uh, invert, subtract green, put back and then uh, pull back on curves and then really it, at this point it's just a matter of playing with curves a little bit and what I'm trying to do is pull out some orange and get some blue and this looked pretty good now before I show you the uh, final image I want to show you what uh, what it looks like with less than 37 hours. 
I mean, this this really goes back to whether or not it's worth it to image uh, with a full moon out. So this is six hours, what I call a quick process. Uh, so by the time I finish collecting data, I've pr actually processed this image three or four times. Like every other night, I'm stacking the data just to look at it. And I do I do a run through, a, what I call a quick process. So there's no deconvolution in here, no noise reduction. Uh, it's basically just um, uh, channel combination, dynamic background extraction, and playing with curves, just to see what's in there. And uh, this image here, which, this is after one night. I call it six hours. It's probably more like five hours and 40 minutes or something like that because uh, it's one of these targets I was able to image from um, dusk to dawn. Uh, and it, I was really surprised with how well this looked. So even with just one night, six hours on this particular target worked just fine with a full moon. It really blew me away. Now, of course, if we get in, I mean, the details are not going to be as tight. And sure, there's plenty of noise here, but... I mean, again, for just uh, just six hours, this is a pretty solid image there. All right, so let's look at the final image. How did things turn out? Here we go. So I spent a lot of time on curves. I got the color just where I wanted it to be. Uh, if you guys have been following me, you know I like a little bit of green in there, and I left a nice bit of green kind of around that dust uh, and I even left a little bit of purple and magenta in there I mean you can see a little bit of it in here and this star over here uh, I, I find that I just really like a lot of variety when it comes to color and so I'm pretty happy the way this turned out and it is a clean image and no noise reduction in here so we can zoom in and look at all this structure here I think the one area I'm still struggling a little bit is with the stars and star net. So, you know, star net leaves some artifacts in here. And I tried using the uh, healing brush in Photoshop to clean some of that up, but I didn't like, sometimes it, it does some weird stuff, even the healing brush. And so I end up just put it, decide to just live with the, with the artifacts for now. But except for that, I think this came out pretty good. We even got a, uh, able to see this uh, matter that's being ejected by the little protostar that's hiding in there. I mean, it's not as good as my uh, Edge 8 on the, uh, on the Pelican, but <laughs> with a little 70 millimeter scope, I can't complain. Yeah, we got all this nice structure in here. I shot this last year in, in, in broadband. And, uh, I mean, broadband looks great, too. But this, you don't get any of this in here. And maybe it was the way I processed it out. But I had, like, 19 hours, and I didn't have anywhere near the detail that I'm getting with this. Uh, same scope. All right, so would love to hear what you guys think. Uh, I hope this does demonstrate that uh, shooting in the moon is not worthless as long as uh, you pick the right target and you have it pointed in the right direction. Uh, it really surprised me in the past. I have not imaged on a full moon thinking it was pointless even with narrow band, but uh, this shot here at least proved me wrong. So good luck to everyone with clear skies and uh, good evening.